This show is produced by the Harwood Podcast Network. Hey there, I'm Cameron Harris. We love making this show available to you free of charge, and you can help keep it that way by making a contribution to our Karma Jar or by becoming one of our sponsors. To learn more, visit our website. Hey there, everyone. I'm Cameron Harris, and welcome to another episode of SketchUp, a 3D Toolbox. This is episode number 49. Now, today we're going to be talking about a very interesting tool in SketchUp called intersecting. Now, intersecting is a bit hard to describe because it's something you could really only do in a virtual 3D world. Essentially taking two objects, merging them together, and then intersecting them to split them based on where they intersect. Like I said, very hard to describe. Let me just show it to you. Now to learn the intersect tool today, I've got what may very well be the most boring model in SketchUp history. I've just got two three-foot cubes here, and what we're going to do is we're going to intersect them. Now as I said, intersecting is where you basically merge these two objects together and then intersect them to uh, kind of split them in parts. Let me show you what that looks like exactly. First, I'm going to select one cube, and then I'm going to move it over here, and you see I'm actually merging it with the other cube, intersecting them essentially. So now you can see that they are basically conjoined right there. But they aren't exactly behaving the way you might expect. Specifically, you'll notice that right here, this seam where these two faces meet, there's no line there. Now there might look like there's a line there because of the slightly different shading, but if you look everywhere else, there's a black line. And you would expect there to be a black line there, but there's not because those faces are still whole faces that are just intersecting, something that is impossible in our physical world, but quite possible in SketchUp. Now, as such, when you merge those two together, they don't actually form a line. They don't actually split those faces apart. Now, if we could, if we could actually pull these, uh, you know, these two guys apart, which we could, it'd just be very difficult to select them because if we triple click, now it selects the whole thing. This is why grouping is very important. But if we could pull those two cubes apart, they would look exactly the same. They wouldn't be any the worse for wear for having been pushed together like this. Which, in some cases, is very nice in SketchUp, but other times you might want to do what's called intersecting them, where they actually do affect each other based on where they intersect. So let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to triple click on this weird bunch of cubes here, and then I'm going to, just to make sure I've got them all selected, and then I'm going to go up to the Edit menu, and I'm going to choose Intersect. Now we got a couple of options here. We're just going to say Intersect with Model. That basically will intersect whatever you have selected. It'll intersect it with the entire model. So let's go ahead and click on that. Now look at what happened there. It may not look like anything happened, but you'll notice that if we look at this seam right here that I was talking about, let me undo the intersect. You see that line? is gone now. If I redo, there it is. Gone. And there it is. That basically says, okay, these two faces are intersecting like this. Let's go ahead and actually split them right there. So it actually draws a line for you right there. Now that may seem like a very weird thing, and it's very difficult to illustrate like this. So let me show you a much better way of illustrating this. Let's say I've got these two cubes apart like this, and I'm going to go ahead and select this cube here and group it. Now the reason we group that cube together is that way we can actually just select that one cube separately from the other cube when we push them together like that. Let me show you. If Because this cube is grouped like this, when I select this cube and intersect it like this, I can still just click on this cube and pull it apart like this. Same thing if I triple click on this guy, even though he's still raw, just lines and faces, not grouped at all, I can pull him apart like this. All it does is it just makes it much easier for these guys to be selected individually. And it's a good idea to have at least one thing uh, grouped when you're intersecting them. Now you see that we've got these two merged together, and you'll see that, like I said, if we pull this cube away, well, where they intersect, there's no line, there's no mark, nothing at all. Now let's look at what happens when we intersect them. So I'm going to go ahead and select this cube here, go up to Edit, Intersect, intersect with model. Now you see what happened there. If I choose this cube, which is grouped, and pull it away, it doesn't affect that cube at all because we didn't have that cube selected. 
Intersecting only affects whatever you have selected. Now, if I pull this cube away, however, you'll notice that there is a line running down the middle of this face where it intersected with this other cube here. And that's exactly what intersecting does. Anywhere a face or a line intersects with another one, it basically splits those in two. So let's look at something a little bit more extreme. If I take this cube here, I'm going to make this cube a little bit bigger. I'm going to add a foot on either side like this. All right. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cube and I'm going to position it right at the tip right, right here. So they're actually just, just touching at that corner right there. And then I'm going to take this cube, push it down a foot, push it th to the right a foot, and I'm going to push it back another foot. So now you can see that we've got these things intersecting right here. Uh, this is a little bit more interesting because we're intersecting way more than just a couple faces here. We're intersecting corners, and we've got all kinds of right angles here. And it's looking pretty weird right now, actually. But what we can do to fix this is intersect it. So let me show you what that would look like. If I select the cube, the smaller cube here, triple click on it just like I did before, and choose Edit, Intersect with Model, you'll notice that we now have those line segments there. And if I triple click and pull this guy apart, you can see that we've got a sort of outline of where they intersected right there. Not just on that face, though. But we've also got it underneath here. And we've also got it over on the side here. Now, one of the things that's kind of cool about this is we've just done something that would be pretty tricky to do by hand, having to draw all these individual lines and everything. And we, if we wanted to, we could use the push-pull tool, push this back, and now we've got that sort of 3D notch in our cube right there. So that's pretty cool. But there's another more practical way that you can use intersecting. Let me show you what that looks like. It involves roofing. All right, now what I've done here is I've just modeled a couple quick uh, roof sections here, obviously without the house, because that doesn't really affect this. But this is really interesting if you're building a roof like this for a house. Uh, what you have here is you got these two sections of roofing here. Now, depending on the floor plan of your house, these roof sections might be separate like this, but chances are you're going to have points where, let's say, they intersect like this. So let's say they go together like that into kind of a corner right there. So if that's the case, this would be really difficult to model by hand. And you could go through and trace all these extra lines, but that would be a big pain. Now, if I go into the group here, just double click on the group and triple click to select this whole section, and then I go up to Edit, Intersect with Model. You can see that what that's done is that's added all the lines and created this very, very cool pattern where they intersect right there. Now, that's pretty cool. But there's actually another way you can use this that's even more time-saving. If it intersects just at a corner like this, so I'll go ahead and move the roof back like this and just have these two intersect right at this corner, you can see that they intersect right here. Now, we've got a bit of a problem here because we've got these weird things right here. We don't really want these extra little chunks right here. We just want to have this be a smooth uh, corner with one line right here. We don't want these extra bits here sticking out. Now, because we're not going to be separating these groups from now on, it's going to be much easier if we actually right-click on them and choose Explode to ungroup them. We're not going to need to separate them from now on. So now this whole thing, this whole weird shape, is in the raw line and face mode. Now let's go up to Edit and Intersect. And then we'll go Intersect with Model. And now you can see it's added all the lines just like it did when they were crossing. But now we can do something rather interesting with this. Because it split all these apart for us, we can actually use the Eraser tool and start deleting chunks. So let's say we delete these lines here. All of a sudden, we've just gotten rid of that part that was sticking out there. We can do the same thing over here, gotten rid of that. And then we can get rid of this line, this line, this line, and that line. And then all of a sudden, we've got this perfect corner for our roof. Now, this is so cool because this saves you a ton of time having to do this by hand. Because not only would you have to draw each individual line 
and then delete it, but you would have to do use the push-pull tool to push things back, move things out of the way. It would have been a huge pain, and it would have taken you five, ten minutes to do it. This way, push them together roughly into the shape you want, intersect them, and just trim off the excess bits with the eraser tool. This is a really, really cool way to use this tool, and it's funny, you might think that you're not going to use it very much, but you will actually use it quite a bit, particularly with things like roofing and more complex objects. So just keep that in mind next time you're doing a fairly complex bit of modeling. Now until next time, be sure to visit our website at www.harwoodpodcast.com. I'll have the show notes for this episode, as well as all the other episodes that we've done. Also be sure to check out the network on Facebook at facebook.com slash harwoodpodcast. We've got some really cool stuff up there. You'll get alerts every time we upload a new episode, and you'll also get some pretty cool behind-the-scenes stuff which is always nice. And if you have any questions or comments for me about the show, suggestions for future episodes or anything like that, you can send me an email at Cameron at HarwoodPodcast.com. Until next time, guys, I'll just say goodbye and good modeling.